Louis Patron back with the Key West Lou Legal Hour. Thank you again for joining me. I have a story to tell you. I was not aware. I'm assuming you're not aware. Uh, and I think it's wrong. You may disagree with me on this, though, but I think it's wrong. I'm talking about hospitals in the United States. I'm talking about illegal immigrants. Immigrants illegally here undocumented persons, illegally here, undocumented persons who get hurt. I'm going to be speaking of medical reparations. It's a new term today, my friends, medical repar reparation. It's like when the war was over in Vietnam and our boys came back, there was repatriation of the boys. I'm calling them boys, they're men, they're soldiers. My God, I just criticized uh, the media for doing that when our men came back, our military men. See how easy it is? Anyhow, uh, what's happening is this. I'm going to give you the scenario now. Immigrants come to this country. They're here illegally. They're not citizens, obviously. They go to work. They get injured. Not even at work. Let's have an automobile accident, terrible automobile accident. They go to the hospital. Now, Let's assume there's no insurance. The hospital will give them emergency tr treatment and perhaps even more because under the law in the United States, a hospital uh, must take care of an injured person even if they cannot pay until they are stabilized. Stabilized is the key word. Stabilized is the operative word. Once they're out of danger, the hospital has no further obligation to care for them. Uh, now, if they've got insurance, let's assume they have insurance, these are illegal aliens, I'm going to use that term, undocumented. If they do have insurance, and some do for various reasons, once that money runs out, if they're stabilized, the hospital has no further obligation to care for them. So what does the hospital do at this point where they're not getting paid or the money's run out? Uh, previously, the hospitals were taking care of these people. Uh, and, you know, they keep them till they were, they were healthy again and discharge them. And that increased my medical costs and your medical costs because our insurance premiums went up. The hospitals had to charge us more to cover the people who didn't have insurance. That was one of the big arguments for Obamacare to come into being. Now, they don't keep them anymore, the hospitals. This, I can't believe. Once the patient is stabilized, if it's an illegal immigrant, because understand, illegal immigrants are not entitled to Medicaid. If, they're, they're, if the person is an illegal immigrant, once stabilized, the hospital ships them out. And do you know where they ship them? To the country from which they came. They get a Medvac airplane, they put the person on it, and they fly them home to their home country. The hospital pays for the airplane because the hospital doesn't want to be responsible for the further gigantic, assuming they're big cases, gigantic medical costs or the rehabilitation costs, which are expensive. Uh, and so they fly them out. And that's how they get rid of the problem. And this has become a big deal now on how to handle these immigrants. Most hospitals now have a special department that just deals with the immigrants and arranges to determine when there's sta stabilization and when they can send them home in an airplane, the hospital's going to rent for them. All right? Let me give you a practical example now of a case that has happened and is alive and going on. Uh, we have two gentlemen. Uh, by the way, what I'm going to all these things what the hospital's doing violates the code of ethics of the American Hospital Association. In 2009, they, the Council on Ethical and Judicial Affairs of the American Hospital Association said, you can't do what I'm talking about. You can't, once they're stabilized, put them on a plane and send them home. It is unethical conduct. But the hospitals are doing it. So let me tell you the story of Jose Rodriguez Saladuna and Juanito Cruz, two men. They're illegals from Mexico. They're working for some fellow who works with pig, pork producer it was called. Fortunately, on the job, they have health insurance. Each of them has a, to a maximum of $100,000. Well, Jose and Juanito 
got in an accident, an automobile accident, both severely injured, both with brain injuries, both immediate heavy surgeries, maybe more surgeries. You're not going to believe what I'm going to tell you. Within five days, within five days of their accident and they're entering the hospital, the $100,000 had been eaten up on the hospitalization policy of both of them. The hundred grand was gone. Hospitals are expensive. I think they overcharge. Time Magazine three months ago had an excellent article on how hospitals are, are gouging the American public and the insurance companies. For example, based on this Time Magazine article, I'm telling you that when you get a bill in the from a hospital, built into that bill is the cost of the ink in the ballpoint pen that the nurses and doctors use to make notes. They figure out how much of that ink's being used, just out of a simple ballpoint pen. They do not miss a stroke, the hospitals today. They're very affluent. They know what they're doing. They're very smart. They know how to make money. I will also tell you, based upon this Time Magazine article, that hospitals are very profitable today, extremely profitable. They charge for everything. You take a simple aspirin that they may pay 50 cents for, 20 cents for, they charge you $15. With that margin of profit, how can they miss? So these two guys are in the hospital. Within five days, they've had brain surgeries and everything else. They almost died. The hundred grand's gone. The hospital says, we don't want them anymore. This is an Iowa hospital. We do not want them anymore. We've got to get rid of them because we're not going to pay for further surgeries. They're stabilized. That means they're alive. They were unconscious. They, had, they were comatose during everything I'm telling you when it occurred, they're out cold comatose. They're, they're going to find the place to send them. They have a department that does this, the department I told you about, just to find out how to get rid of these illegals. On the 11th day, they put them on an airplane, these two gentlemen, who they were still comatose. It was 11 days since the accident. Neither one has come to yet. They're comatose. They have nothing to do with even the decision involved here and ship them home to their community in Mexico from whence they came. One is semi-paralyzed today. One is still in the hospital down there. The other one didn't get proper rehab. He tries to sell envelopes and stationery. He forgets where he is. People have to take him home because he doesn't know, remember where his home is. He has a leg. He drags. Well, the hospital got rid of him. Uh, the hospital paid for the airplane. That saved them money. Can you imagine? These two fellows are comatose yet. They have not come to in 11 days, but they're stabilized, which means they are going to live, and they're put on the airplane by the hospital and sent home. I think this is terrible. I'm, I absolutely think this is terrible. Uh, I mean, who's going to pay for it? I know. We've got to work all these details up. That's inhumane. That's not American. That's wrong. It proves something to me. It establishes something I've always known and perhaps you've always known. Money controls. Money is the boss. So the hospital isn't going to get paid. They don't have to do God's will, God's way. They don't have to take care of these people. What bothers me is if they can do it to a non-American citizen, now they know the way to do it. Tomorrow they'll do it to American citizens because the cost of medical care is becoming so heavy that it's difficult to pay for it. We all know that. And so what happened to these two fellows could happen to you and I several years down the road. Stay with me. I'll be back shortly. I hope you enjoyed this background on the hospital situation. I'll be back.